Davis and Dan Jessup. Got to assume that when players like on a team like this, that they both know this matchup going into it, likely worked on their deck lists together. Yep. Not going to be any surprises here. Mm -hmm. Jim, of course, has been writing about this deck for Star City Games. Likes it a lot. Obviously, he's 6-0 here. Had a good weekend last weekend as well. I believe a top 16 finish. It's the type of strategy that I would, you know, I like seeing this in standard. We don't always get a straight Drago control deck like this. Mm -hmm. Seems like every other year, maybe, this deck is good. The metagame gurus are really big on Ice Age basic lands. Yeah, but I guess for, on both sides here. And just some setup for both players for Jessup. Looks like he'll just be attuning with the ether. Or maybe Vessel of Nascent Seeing. We'll do both. has a lot of that mana fixing here. Uh, two attune, four vessel, four traverse for Jessup. Mm -hmm. So in that regard, he is really trying to put together Delirium so that he can find these combo pieces. Um, though in this matchup, it seems like it's going to be the Cloud Blazers and Ishkanas that are better cards. Yeah, and there's no copies of Oath of Nyssa in Jessup's deck. He's using the yeah. Vessel of Nascency. It's uh, quite good at enabling Delirium. Uh, that turns on his traverses. That seems like a downside in this matchup, though. Um, if he had oaths in play, then suddenly the Felidar Guardians would be cards that Jim would want to counter. Mm -hmm. uh, here, it's like Jim can probably let Felidar Guardians resolve. Yes. The four-color deck with all this mana fi fine search can can really be prone to flooding out. You see a second vessel from Jessup. Would have been a really good window for Rogue Refiner. Yeah, Jim only had black mana. Now he adds an island to the mix, so cards like Horribly Awry and Negate now become live for Jim Davis. And Dan goes to work with his vessels, find, finds a land off it. It's one copy of Horribly Awry in the main deck. It won't have access to Disallow just yet. No player has, well, presented a threat yet. I suppose we would expect that of Jim. <laughs> right now, you know, Jim's got to be happy that, Dan, that Jessup's not doing anything like Rogue Refiner, which mm -hmm. kind of just grinds down the cards in Jim's hand every time Jessup goes for one. So we see our first Felidar Guardian in Jessup's hand. Like I mentioned before, there's not... No, it's a Vessel. It's not an Oath, so... Mm -hmm. Jim can let it resolve. Which means for Jessup, it's going to be a copy of Servant of the Conduit as his first threat. If it resolves, it'll bring him up to five energy. Jessup, currently just not a lot going on. Another Vessel of Nascency is in his hand. He just wants to start cracking these to yeah. find some action. The longer the game goes, that's generally going to be quite good for Jim. Jim Grasp of Darkness is the Servant, but this might be interesting. Um, I don't believe Jim has a fourth land at the moment. So That kind of negates... Uh, my comment about the game going long being good for him. If he misses land drops, uh, yeah. it's going to be bad. He has picked up a disallow. He's going to need an island. Dan goes at, uses that vessel to find a Sahili. So between Sahili Rai and the Guardian in hand, Jessup does have the full combo. That can put a lot of pressure on Davis. Mm -hmm. And he has picked up a Rogue Refiner, so now he can just do other things while he waits for the turn where he can combo off face safely. Yeah, and that's really great. I'm interested to see whether or not Jessup just wants to send Rogue Refiner into Jim's single island. The only thing he'd be worried about would be the Horribly Awry. Mm -hmm. Looks like Jessup's willing to take that risk. Yep, I would definitely say that that's worth it. All right. 3-2 draws a card and gets two energy for Jessup. If he just runs out the Felidar Guardian and Jim grasps it, um, that, that's much worse than a Grasp in this spot, and Jim plays a lot more Grasp than he does Horribly Arise. Draws into the land. Seven energy now hanging out for Jessup. His payoff here is he has two copies of Whirler Virtuoso in the deck. So if or when he finds them, he'll just that will be a very strong card. Mm -hmm. Cast Traverse the Ulfen Vault. This one... Should be with Delirium enabled. Yeah, he has four mm -hmm. card types. If he finds Deep Fiend here and a land, uh, he could cleanly combo off. He doesn't necessarily need the combo in this game. 
No, he's going for Ishkana Graf Widow, which, looking at Jim's lands, if Jim does not play another island on this next turn, Dan can just jam Ishkana. There's not a card in Jim's deck that will stop him. Mm -hmm. Yep, that would just definitely resolve. Rogue Refiner gets hit by a Grasp of Darkness, and Jim, there we go. It's a dual land. He plays Sunken Hollow not too late. <laughs> you know, just in time, so he can hold up the second blue for that Ishkana. Mm -hmm. Disallowing that is significant. Dan will go for it. Here's the check. Do you have the counter? And Jim does. We'll see if he wants to spend it on this. And he does. Yeah, given that Jim doesn't have access to any sweepers, uh, countering that one, I think you just have to. He's got to be worried, right? If Dan plays a sixth land, Dan can always just jam for the combo. He has both halves. Yep. I'm assuming that Jim has some kind of interaction with for that outside of the spell. Swamp, go. You see, tempting would it be to cast Jace here. He just can't let the shields down. Yep. And if Jim's able to find a six land, he'll have access to Gear Hulk, and then things will be really good for him. Yeah, the window for Jessup's closing a bit right now. He hasn't landed enough. I know I'm not sure he's landed enough card advantage mm -hmm. to start winning on this board. You know, Jim's going to start glimmering on end steps and gear hulking glimmers. And yes. Yeah, Jessup's draw, it was a little too much Vessel and Nascency, not enough aggression. He will go for Sahili Rai. Maybe you can do the combo in two pieces. Does this get countered by Jim? I, I believe he has a ruinous path, so there's some temptation here just to let this resolve and take care of it next turn. Mm -hmm. Really depends what he wants to do with his mana in the following turn. He doesn't know whether or not he's going to have six mana for Gear Hulk. Sure. So the ruinous, ruinous path in his following turn is pretty tempting. Plus from Zahili, scries to the bottom for Dan. And he'll keep going. It looks like another Vessel of Nascency passes. Jim will glimmer. Scry to draw to. Game to energy. Game to energy. Finds another a Gear Hulk and a Glimmer. These are great. He does not have land six. So I'm just to see just, you know, whether he keeps one, neither, maybe both. These cards are both pretty hard to pass up. Yeah, it looks like he wants the Glimmer. He's deciding if he wants the Gear Hulk, because that would be his second Gear Hulk. Mm, the Glimmer, yeah, definitely keep that one. It helps him make his land drops. Uh, glimmer is generally what this deck wants to be doing. You're assuming you're not dying, you want to be Glimmering. And the Gear Hulk's his big payoff in the deck. How about this? Both to the bottom. He is really looking for lands. Must be light on interaction. That's possible. If he's just leaving up Glimmer and doesn't have a way to break up the combo, that would be bad news. And despite double scry to the bottom, Jim does not find land six. That's big. Here's Ruinous Path for Sahili. He's got Negate, Disallow, Murder, Ruinous Path, Gear Hulk, Jace. Mm -hmm. Given that Jessup has access to Elder Deep Fiend in his deck and Jim knows about it, uh, it definitely wants, he wants to get proactive with the Gear Hulk as soon as possible. That's likely the argument for why you put any non-land on the bottom of your deck. Yeah, none of this matters if he does, if he can't cast the Gear Hulk. Yeah. Traverse from Dan. It is on, Delirium is on. I think Jim has in the gate. He does. Now, the interesting thing is that Dan has not played a land yet this turn. Mm -hmm. So if he negates and Dan just goes, land six, fellow Dark Guardian, Sahili, kill you. Yes. That, that could happen. That would be bad. So I think out of respect for that, Jim just kind of has to let this resolve. Yeah. This combo deck uh, puts you in a tight spot, especially when you're missing land drops. Yeah. What, your point is, oh, no, they have six lands, right? And the, the downside is that this means Dan, I don't think Dan had the combo, and now he just gets to find Ishkana and cast it. Can't negate that one. Right. It's there was so there's kind of a bind here. Jim can either counter the traverse and hope to not lose to the combo, or he just has to try to beat Nishkana. And she'll come with two spines attached. Jim doesn't get to spend those two mana. There is the land. It's gonna enter the battlefield tapped. A choked estuary, not always the best one off the top. Yeah, what Jim has going for him is, though, he has a lot of life points to work with here. Mm -hmm. He's at a very healthy 19. 
Um, the Gear Hulk, eventually, if he gets into play, just can block the Ishkana outright. So tap land and go for Jim Davis. Yeah. Side, you see on his look, uh, Jim's face there, he had a look of uh, not entirely happy with the board. He's going to be taking a lot of damage for the line he's choosing. Mm -hmm. And Jessup, I believe he does have Felidar Guardian blinking Ishkana with that. It's a pretty good payoff, especially against the deck with uh, no sweepers. So first he swings for six. And you're right, I think he might go for that blink play. But he wants to get the damage in first, and that's just not going to happen. Jim, with a murder on the spider. Yeah, uh, being able to, you can't blink the Ishkana if he has a kill spell. So you do combat, see if he has it. Jim wants to conserve his life total, spends it. Jim takes three, down to 16. And Jessup has three cards in hand. Unfortunately for him, two of them are Felidar Guardian. The good news is the third one, Sahili Rai. <laughs> Cracks Vessel. Now, Jim has the combo covered. He has the Sahili Rai covered with a negate right now. Mm -hmm. um, there aren't counter spells in Dan's deck to stop that. You know, he can't, like, draw to a negate. At least not game one. Right. Dan will use the vessel, but all it picks him up is a Aether Hub, so he has to play that. Hand is Guardian, Guardian, Sahili. And Dan has eight lands in play. Yeah, this is where that lack of Oath of Nyssa, I think, is hurting him. He, he'd really like to just kind of throw an Oath of Nyssa onto the board here. Or, or if he had Oath, he'd just throw yeah, one of his Guardians onto guardian, the board. Uh, yeah. yeah. He'll go for Sahili, Jim negates. And now Jessup's almost out of threats. If he can't quickly produce another threat, Jim is going to run away with this. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got, even now he's got Kalidus, Disallow, Blue Gear Hulk, Jace. It, this is not good for Dan Jessup. Mm -hmm. Just has so many kind of dead cards here. Jim, seventh land, pass. Got a hard counter in his hand. Got a Gear Hulk for Glimmer if Jim if Dan doesn't do anything. <laughs> Dan does draw another Sahili Rai. Now, one of the temptations is last turn, Jessup went for a Sahili into two mana. If he'd waited till he had something like double Sahili, it possibly could have overpowered some removal spells. Yeah, he could have uh, potentially resolved one of them anyway. Or something like maybe he plays a Guardian onto the board and then plays two Sahilis. The second one resolves, he wins. Mm -hmm. It's still not great. It looks like Jessup's going to attempt a combo this turn. Basically, we're at the stage where Jim is going to start pulling ahead very quickly. Sure. He's done treading water. He's run Jessup very low on resources. He's got a Torrential Gear Hulk, a bunch of stuff in his hand. Uh, he can just turn this around very quickly. So Jan Jessup's last hope is to force Jim to have the remaining counters. Yes. Jim will play Blue Gear Hulk and negate away the Sahili. And Jessup, no choice but to just pass. And Jim's going to draw another Gear Hulk. Ugh. This is going to be very difficult for Jessup to get through. Mm -hmm. Davis attacks for six, Jessup down to 15. And just another pass. There's Disallow and Gear Hulk in hand for Jim. He should have this one wrapped up. <laughs> Jessup draw, he draws another Sahili. <laughs> Keeps trying for it. There's another Gear Hulk. That's going to be on another counterspell. Disallow. And what I like about Jim, this is a show of strength. You know how he's not getting that glimmer with any of these Gear Hulks? Instead, he's just preserving his counterspells? Yep. <laughs> I like it. Hits Jessup down to five, plays a Kalidus. Or make that ten. One of the spiders jumped in the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jim's so far ahead with the resources that he has. It's pretty clear how he can end the game with the Gear Hulks. Yeah, he doesn't need to glimmer anymore. Exactly. This matchup is not really about card advantage um, once the game gets to this point. Jim can do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. You have to keep up with um, things like Rogue Refiner in the early game if Dan has one of those draws. But now Jim's cards are just better. A harnessed lightning on a Kalidus. It's fine for Jim. He'll let that one go. Still has the counter spell in hand, but not going to use it there. No, no need. Two Felidar Guardians in Jessup's hand, not doing much. 
And it looks like Jim's going to clean this up. The Gear Hulks represent lethal. Jace is going to join him. He still has the counter spell up. The Gear Hulks swing. The spiders block. Jace bounced one of them. Okay, Jace bounced one, and Dan went to five. He draws. That's not going to save him. I think he drew a Rogue Refiner. Okay, well, we'll draw a card. Let's see what card it is. Wanted that one on turn three. Did you see, Jim, do I, do I counter this? Uh, yeah, whatever. You can draw. That's fine. It's fine. Third Felidar Guardian. That's... We'll go for that play. I think at this point, Jim probably counters. Yeah, may, may as Counters well. it, untaps, bounces the blocker, kills him, kills Dan. Yeah, or just attacks into it. He's got two lethal attackers. Yeah. So. Yeah. Game one goes to Jim Davis. You know, we were speculating this might have been a negative matchup for Jim, but after that game... It, that looked good. Dan's early game didn't really amount to much. So right. Uh, very heavy on Vessel and ACC, very light on pressure. So it got to the stage where he was casting Sahili not as a sh showing of strength, just kind of out of desperation. Uh, the game slipped away from him very, very much in the mid-game. Well, if you look at his deck, okay, counting the cards that actually matter here, you know, he's got two Whirler Virtuosos, one Tracker, two Ishkana, a Cloud Blazer, and a Deep Fiend, and everything else is kind of air. And if that's true, we only... It's only seven cards. Rogue Reviner as well. All right. So we're up to 11, but as a control deck, you tell me all I have to do is, you know, your deck only has 11 threats, and some of them are 3 twos. Like, I don't know. I, I think I can play ball with that. Yeah, that's fair. We'll look at the sideboard, though. One thing I can expect, Dan's deck will have a lot less air after sideboard. Yes. Uh, we looked at the sideboard. He has two Tireless Tracker, two Negates, two Radiant Flames, two Confiscation Coup, two Nahiri the Harbinger, a Dragon Master Outcast, a Nissel Vital Force, an Oath of Chandra, a Dispel, and a Green Warden of Marasa. So there's a lot of stuff to like here. Uh, the Negates are generally going to be quite good at Jim's, uh, against yeah. Jim's deck. You can use it as protection for your combo as well, theoretically. Uh, Tireless Tracker is great. Generates card advantage. It's another one of those creatures that Jim has to answer immediately. Uh, I like Nahiri just because it's a Planeswalker. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of taxing on Jim's counter spells as opposed to his kill spells. Mm -hmm. So anything that you can only counter and can't kill, I'm, I'm probably into. Yep, Nissa Vital Force for much the same reason. That one's definitely better. Um, yeah. Uh, good argument for Dispel just to fight over some of Jim's stuff. And I like Green Warden of Marasa. Yeah, I don't see that card very much. Um, I mean, if you can resolve it, that's, that is, is a, just a stack of card advantage. Mm -hmm. And presumably... Dan's bringing in Dragon Master Outcast against any opponent that's trying to make the game go long. All right. Yeah, I would think so. Um, Jim will probably kill it. That might be fine. But he has to kill it. But he has to kill it, right. Yep. It's a one-man investment, so there's there's a lot of good there. On Jim's side, he's got three Dispel, two Deadweight, two Fathom Feeder, two Ruinous Path, a Blighted Cataract, a Fatal Push. That would be the... Uh, That'd be the fourth Fatal Push. Mm -hmm. uh, a copy of Kalidus, the third one. Uh, a Negate, a Sphinx of the Final Word, and a Tooth of Slaughter. A lot of these are cards he already has in the main. They're just different numbers. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I'm actually really interested in here is, how do you feel about the card Fathom Feeder in this matchup? Uh, I don't really think that that's what this is for. I, I imagine it's that's for Control like, Mirrors. Just, just, yeah, this is, we're not so slow that we can do that. Right. Uh, likely they're looking mostly at these instant speed ways to interact with the combo. That to the slaughter is looking great. Yeah, uh, Susar does. Negate is is good enough in this matchup. I don't know if you have to go up on that one. Um, in a, yeah, this is not much. In a lot of ways, this is Jim's going to lose some ground after game one. Yeah, Jessup's got a lot more stuff coming in. You know, the ruinous paths are good for Jim, but they're not great. I see just how Jim boards on it. So over Star City Games, we have game night going on everywhere around the country. A store near you can get exclusive pins and tokens just for playing the tournaments that you would normally play during the week. So for January, we've been giving away the copy of Squeaky Cheeky, the Acorn Breaker. This is your favorite goblin squirrel. I'm winning this one in January. Next, This is the last week for it, though, because next month we are giving away as a prize the Corgi Firewalker. So we're going first from squirrels over to pups. This one is the 1-1 one -one soldier, the Pun on Core Firewalker. And if your store gets signed up now for the pro promotion, we can get you signed up in time to get you the March promo, which is going to be Pig Through Time. It's, of course, the Delve spell from Kanza Tarkir. Pig Through Time is nice. I like that one. And probably because it's a blue card. I but think, I think this is I my like favorite. I like the pig one, too. Like, of all time? Yeah. That's big. All right. That's pig. That's pig. Oh, oh. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Game two, we start out again with Jessup on a tune. 
How much of the combo is, do you think is still in Dan's deck at this point? I expect that it is present, but trimmed. The Felidar Guardians seemed really bad that game. I am inclined to yeah. agree. The Sahelis also didn't do very much. They got countered. They have the po those ones I'm okay with, right? They can minus, they can copy a bunch of things in here. Yeah, copying Rogue Refiner is great. Yeah, copying. You kind of got to ask yourself how many copies in the gate you think Jim has in his deck. Yeah, I, I agree. Jimmy, his land is one of two copies. He plays of Submerged Boneyard. That's just the tap land that's always tapped, but he's very, Jim, a very reliable mana base. 27 lands. Yeah, 27 lands, 10 duels. Unfortunate thing about blue black control is he doesn't get any creature lands, but uh, he's, he's rarely going to be having issues with his colored mana. It's interesting that he's going for something like Submerged Boneyard over, say, an Evolving Wilds, especially when he's a deck with three Fatal Pushes. Yeah, uh, mostly a nod to the fact that he would just rather have an actual dual land. Right. So Jessup ran out a turn three Sahili into Negate mana, but Jim didn't have the Negate. He did, however, have a Ruinous Path, so cleans up the board. That'll do. Rat. Dan drew the Guardian. <laughs> <laughs> if Jim had just tapped out for some three drop, you know, then Dan would have we'd be going to game three. You just cast something stupid like Dynavolt Tower. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why I don't want to play that. <laughs> no copies in Jim's deck, of course. Yeah. What we saw last game was that Dan's hands just didn't have that many must answer threats, and then Jim would just very quickly answer them all. We'll see if Jessup can do better. He's going to play Felidar Guardian onto an empty board, bouncing the Aether Hub. Just as a 1-4, it's not, it's not great as an attacking threat. It does make his future Sahili Rise rather scary. Mm. You kind of assume Jim will just kill this, too, if he, or if he needs to, I guess. You can kill it. You can not kill it. Looks like he has a Disallow in hand. Um, and I think his removal spell is Grasp of Darkness. So I don't really see a reason to proactively on his main phase kill the Guardian. He is in territory, though, where if Dan has a fifth land, he can cast the Helian Negate on the next turn. So Dan could also just have Dispel right now. Yeah, if that's the case, there may not be that much Jim can do. I suppose he could ruin his path, and that's what he'll do. You can't Dispel that card. Yes. One four is down. Definitely very much respecting the combo. Yeah. <laughs> and Jan drawing a Sahili Rai that turn. Okay, yeah. Dan has had the combo in hand just about every turn of all the games we're seeing here. What he does get to do, though, since Jim took down Counterspell Mana, is play Cloud Blazer. When Dan tapped five lands, uh, we would much rather be casting Nissa right now. Cloud Blazer is still quite good. Yeah. This card, probably a three for one. Jim will spend a kill spell on it, and it drew, Jan drew Jessup two cards. And you look in his hand, Jessup does now have a negate. So something like Sahili with negate up. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like that quite a bit with Cloud Blazer. Yep, he has a sixth land and a torrential gear alk as well. Jim's got a lot of interaction. It's going to pass. Now we see where Jessup goes. All right. Ooh, looks like Onions. Jessup has a Green Warden of Marasa. Oh. If he can get that card to, to happen, I mean, that's a huge win. Yes. He's going to start by trying for Sahili Ride. This should cause a fight, because I don't think Jim wants this copy in Cloud Placer. No. Yeah, Jim does have a removal spell, so he can just kill the Cloud Blazer if that's Dan's plan. He's going to start by attempting to disallow the Sahili. Uh, Jessup will negate that disallow. Sahili resolves. She's going to go down to one to copy Cloud Blazer, and Jim says no. He'll grasp of darkness away the flyer. Land for Jessup and a traverse. Creature, instant, planeswalker, land, sorcery. Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> So Jim's keeping pace here, where they're trading cards one for one, but each turn it looks like Jessup's getting to keep about one thing in play, because he's one card ahead. So, you know, he untapped with Cloud Blazer, he left the turn with a Sahili Ride. 
On the following turn, though, Jim's going to have access to Torrential Gear Hulk. Yeah, that's all he'll be able to catch back up, as long as he can not fall too far behind, which I think he's doing. Yes. Dan picks up Dragon Master Outcast. Ooh, okay. I like this. If he has a seventh land, he can cast that and Green Warden on the following turn. Yeah, and that would have to. That play makes a lot of sense. I think he might have Ishkana with it, too, which wouldn't be bad. Also, also good. <laughs> and Jim, land six, he picks up a second Gear Hulk for the turn. And this is a pretty nice spot. Six lands, two Gear Hulks, and a Glimmer. That Those are mighty nice holdings. Yeah. Let's see if Dan can break through. Those five sixes are the two for ones that Jim plays. So. And Jan's going to start on Dragon Master Outcast. This is the test spell. Then he plays Ishkana. Expect to see some action yeah, on this one. Yeah, I don't, I think he, This one might not be OK. <laughs> might not work. <laughs> well, it's interesting. We'll see what Jim does. Um, he could Gear Hulk. Uh, yeah, he'll play Gear Hulk and on Disallow. He'll counter away the Ishkana. Jim wants to be able to attack the Sahili to death. Right. Draws another Gear Hulk. I mean, at this point in the game, once you hit six lands, I don't know if Jim can have too many of this card. No. It's the, the only way you have too many is if you, if you don't have anything that matters in your graveyard. Jim plays Gear Hulk, kills Dragon Master. He's dead to the combo now. Jim will have to... Uh, yeah, I was surprised that he did that. Um, I know this sounds weird. I almost want to feel like if he gave... Jessup a dragon, then he could have killed it. Like, that might have been okay. Well, you can also just Gear Hulk and Dan's second main phase to kill the Dragon Master. Yeah, I mean, it means that Dan gets one dragon, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's He's fine. They're five fives. He, they're five fives. But, um, and these are five sixes. Yeah, five so, like, maybe that's fine. fine. Yeah, letting him have a dragon seems okay. I mean, I don't think it doesn't look like Jessup's going to combo him. Yeah. And Green Warden and Marasa. But he does get Green Warden and Marasa off. That's pretty nice. Okay. 5-4. That's not nice, but let's have a look at the other part of the text. <laughs> he gets a card back now, and he gets a card back when it dies. And Jim is out of stuff to Gear Hulk. Just two ruinous paths so in his graveyard. What if Dan gets Sahili Rai, Chump Blocks gets Felidar Guardian, and then shoves? I get that this might not work, but... Well, Jim's hand you know. currently is Glimmer Gear Hulk. Yeah, and it looks like Dan is going to get that Sahili. He's debating between it and Dragon Master. Yeah, he'll go for the Planeswalker. Play a land, say go. He may just force Jim to have one more answer. Well. There we go. That's, that, that's, <laughs> I like it when, you, when your opponent <laughs> so gets back as a Healy Rye, and then you just draw a uh, negate. That's good. That'll, so if he didn't draw that, you know, there was an interesting discussion about whether or not Jim should even attack. Right. But now he's <laughs> whatever. Should, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Sure. Take take ten block. I don't know. Dan takes it all. Goes to twelve. I mean, the fact that Jim specifically has six mana for negate plus glimmer. That's that's nice. That's pretty great. See, Jim's deck has synergies too. <laughs> Sahili so rise a play from Dan. There's there's no way this is happening. <laughs> I guess I guess there's a way. Maybe it is. That's even grosser. Well Jim doesn't have a kill spell, and Sahili just making another green warden is really good. Yeah, I don't I just think you're right. I mean Okay, yeah, I don't see why we wouldn't negate. I guess he's gonna glimmer first. Get more information. I think this is a test spell. He, if Dan has a negate, he wants Dan to spend it here because Jim doesn't actually need the glimmer. Mm -hmm. eh, two lands, not those. Let's try some other stuff. Okay, a disallow. Yeah, that's great. And by the way, negate Sahili. Jim seems to be so much better at just finding the relevant cards. Every turn it feels like Dan's having to top deck to, to just stay in the game. Mm -hmm. 
And really what we've seen a lot of is the wrong part of Dan's deck is showing up in the early game. Well, I mean, he hasn't had that many rogue refiners, but like Dan resolved a Cloud Blazer, and then he resolved a Green Warden and Marasa, and I, See, none like, of this mattered, you know? These cards are good, but that's Dan playing Jim's game. Rogue yeah. Refiner, like, replaces itself and lets Dan be aggressive. Jim, wants, right. Jim wants you to cast Green five Warden, and six mana spells. Green Warden and Cloud Blazer are a lot of card advantage, but they, they're not a lot of pressure. Yes. Like, this, this is not on the level of Birthing Pod, where, where they play a very good late game. This deck does okay in this stage of the game, whereas Jim deck gets very good at this stage of the game. Yeah. It's not like Jessup has an active pod, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Potting into Green Warden and Marasa seems sweet. Oh, yes. I like that. Yeah. You can do that in uh, Legacy, I guess. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure we could Nick fit into that. <laughs> the deck that plays all the green cards in your trade binder. Yeah. It's just <laughs> we go back to Jim, but he gets to untap with a, another blue gear hulk and a disallow in hand. This is a pretty safe spot for Jim Davis. Yep. Here's a pair of five sixes crashing in. It's now ahead in the race. So Dan didn't make an attack which leads me to believe that he wants to make a block, get something back, try to force a combo through somehow. I guess he's uh, committed to not attacking or blocking. It just takes the 10 here. Goes down to two. Straws Botanical Sanctum. So two lands and a Felidar Guardian. He'll, he'll play the Guardian. And He has to keep, he's been spending all his energy on that Aether Hub this game. <laughs> it's now out of energy. Jim will disallow. Dan has two lands. So that's going to be a handshake. And in commanding fashion, the captain of the metagame gurus uh, takes that one over to his teammate. 2-0. He moves to 7-0. And, oh. and that's how it works. You know, if Dan